So first up is Nancy. Nancy Viltink, she's an urban farmer um, focused on trying to change the food system to be more sustainable and a plant-based diet. She lives and works in Amsterdam, which is a really perfect city as it's got a lot of variety growing in the surrounding districts and great organic shops and markets. Um, I think Nancy, you came to urban farming after years of working in communication and theatres. Um, right. And also as a writer and storyteller. And she's going to be talking to us about Soup from the North, um, yeah. which is a one year vegetable garden on top of the metro in Amsterdam, growing soup, vegetables, and herbs for neighborhood soup. So, Nancy, go for it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I look a bit scary because I've just been eating this. So, I have a bit of green here, but sorry for that. Um, thank you. I, I was triggered by the question what matters now? Uh, because I think um, there's one thing that always matters much more than we than we uh, than we realize, and that is food, the food that you eat every day. Uh, whether it is uh, you have the abundance of a city like Amsterdam that is sometimes called food paradise because there's so much, or whether you're living in a, a area where there is practically no food or no nice food. Um, you can do so much by just eating or, or by uh, the way that you're handling your food. Uh, so one day, uh, well, actually it took many years, but okay, one day my neighbor asked me, uh, he was living down the street and he said, will you join? I said, join what? He was going to go to a, a course, a two year, really intense course, three days a week um, for urban farming. And he said, we have this nice patch of land just across uh, our canal, uh, right in the heart of Amsterdam, and they have built a metro there. And now it's time that we take that piece of land and, and a plot of 3,000 square meters and we make it, turn it into a vegetable garden. I thought it was a brilliant idea. It took us another three years before the city government gave us one third of that patch of land, because that's how things go here in Amsterdam. It's never... Uh, yeah, good idea, we do that, uh, but we did it. And then people started asking me why you were working in communication and that wasn't that nice and theatre is so important and isn't the arts the place to be? I said, yeah, sure it is for lots of people, I think, but now with COVID, I see all these people sitting at home, inside, uh, frustrated, uh, and actually what are they creating is words or papers, which are no longer papers because they're all in a computer. So more words, but then digital. Whereas um, we really grow something and then you can eat it. And it, it matters so much what you do, what you eat. So for example, from my fridge this morning, I took this Almhof uh, yogurt. Uh, I love um, Hope Yogurt. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with people eating it, but it is a bit of a complicated product if you look at the whole food system, because this little pot of yogurt, it comes from about, I think, 30 countries. I mean, the, the milk comes from one country, but then the food that the cows are eating comes from Brazil, probably. Uh, we are now having a big debate in the Netherlands with angry farmers that they want to keep on to that habit of feeding our cows with food from abroad. And then it goes to a factory that has to be built. And then the nectarines, I see, they were probably grown who knows where, France, I hope. Uh, and then there's passion fruit, probably from Egypt, that all came together in a, in a factory after it was processed in different factories until it was as they say, uh, into a sort of concentrate uh, juice. Then there was sugar, so they needed some sugar beets coming in and make the sugar. Then the pot itself is made probably from oil uh, coming from Arabia or Texas, who knows. Uh, then there's this uh, aluminium lid coming from Suriname, might be. And then all the paint and printing on it, it well, it, it's endless, you know? One little pot of yogurt, comes from everywhere and whereas from the garden we just put in some seeds and we have this beautiful teeth green making rucola and that's such a mind-blowing difference uh, that a lot of people don't realize that that it is such a choice whether you eat this 
or whether you eat this, and of course you cannot eat rucola on a daily basis and eat nothing else, but uh, a lot of people don't even think about it. So first, my life was like this, nice, sweet and creamy and a little exotic in the theater. Uh, and now it's a little bit more like this, fresh and uh, tasty and crunchy and difficult at times, but it's a shift for me to what matters and to consider the whole food system and how maybe my little garden and the talks I have with the people working and volunteering in the garden about, whoa, I never knew how onions grew. I never imagined that this is what it looks like if they're really in the soil. And whereas everybody knows what a hamburger looks like because McDonald's is throwing it into your face everywhere, nobody knows what it looks like when an onion is grown. So um, I was very happy and fortunate that when Corona hit, uh, we were outside working in the garden. There was not much difference. Uh, I know a lot of people that were not so fortunate, although I don't earn so much money. It's our third year of uh, our education, we call it, because we still have to find a way to earn money with it. Um, but it reminds me of what someone said. Uh, they say it's a chief, but I don't think that's really true. It's an Indian chief. Uh, he said, only when the last tree is cut and uh, the last river polluted and the last fish from that river uh, is caught, uh, that uh, you realize that you can't eat project plans. Well, no, the actual text is you can't eat money. But um, you can't eat project plans either, you know? So the first speaker who said, do something, act, go out, I think he is so right. And uh, although I have no idea what this will uh, how this will end and if we're ever going to be real farmers making money uh, growing rucola. Uh, I love my rucola and uh, onions and everything else that's grown there. I think what matters is as, uh, what was his name again, first speaker? I think, like, oh yeah, Phil. He said, um, do something, make it happen, change the system bit by bit. Thank you.